my brothers and sisters, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We ask that the Lord will watch over us and bless us today, that we may always be willing and open to doing the will of God. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Well, that's a cute, jazzy little tune, but... <laughs> Take two. Let us pray. O oh God, who has prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Judges. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, passed through Gilead and Mansah, and through Mitzvah, Gilead as well. And from there he went on to the Ammonites. Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. If you deliver the Ammonites into my power, he said, whoever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites shall belong to the Lord. I shall offer him up as a burnt offering. Jephthah went on to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his power. So they inflicted a severe defeat on them, from Or to the approach of Minith, 20 cities in all, and as far as Abel Kurum. Thus were the Ammonites brought into subjection by the children of Israel. When Jephthah returned to his house in Mitzvah, it was his daughter who came forth, playing the tambourines and dancing. She was, only, she was an only child. He had neither son nor daughter beside her. When he saw her, he rent his garments and said, Alas, daughter, you have struck me down and brought calamity upon me. For I made a vow to the Lord, and I cannot retract. She replied, Father, you have made a vow to the Lord, do with me as you have vowed, because the Lord has wrought vengeance for you on your enemies, the Ammonites. Then she said to her father, let me do this favor. Spare me for two months that may I, go, that I may go up down the mountains to mourn my virginity with my companions. Go, he said, and sent her away for two months. So she departed with her companions and mourned her virginity on the mountains. At the end of the two months, she returned to her father, who did to her as he had vowed. Word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Here I am, Lord. I've come to do your will. Blessed the man who makes the Lord his trust, who turns not to idolatry or to those who stray after falsehood. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. 
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. Then the king said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. So go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out to the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. And he said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. And the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise well, today we're going to continue the drama of Abimelech and Jotham. And when I was referring to preach on Judges 9, I initially read this wonderful story of the trees, and I thought, what the heck is going on here? And I thought, well, I'll look at the gospel lesson, it's more familiar, but the Holy Spirit kept drawing me back to Judges 9. And if you remember in the story from yesterday, Jotham talked about four trees, a spiritual arboretum, the olive tree, the fig tree, the vine, and the buckthorn. We remember that Gideon was a military ruler, leader, judge, and prophet. And the Israelites wanted him to rule over them, but he told them, no, the Lord must rule over you. Now Gideon had many lives, and the fruits of his labor produced seventy sons. And through his concubine, he had another son, Abimelech. After his death, the Israelites abandoned the Lord their God, worshipped Baal, and Abimelech was ruthless, ambitious, evil. He hired men to kill his seventy brothers on a single stone. But Jotham, the youngest one, escaped. For he was hidden. Abimelech was made king. Jotham heard of it. He cried out in a loud voice. And the lesson of the trees. I want us to consider what the trees teach us about what it means to worship the Lord our God and live a life of faithfulness, and what it means to worship idols, wealth, pleasure, power, and sex. Faithfulness to God. The olive tree. Oil from this tree is used to make the oil for sacred chrism, which we use in baptism, to anoint the infant following their baptism with water. And according to the Roman Catholic Church teaching, a sacramental character is an indelible spiritual mark that is imprinted on us through our baptism and even confirmation in holy orders. Olive oil is also the ingredient used for the oil used in the anointing of the sick. 
to receive physical and spiritual health. The lesson here, through baptism, we are commissioned to go out into the world and make disciples, evangelization. Through the corporal works of mercy, we're to visit and care for the sick and infirmed. And through the spiritual works of mercy, we're to comfort the afflicted. The fig tree, sweetness and good fruit. St. Paul reminds us of the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the vine. The vine produces grapes used to make wine, the Eucharist. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. Father Andrew Hyman from the Diocese of Wichita shares, the Eucharist is your opportunity to carry Jesus within your body. Every time you receive the body and blood of Jesus, his sacred heart rests in you. His divine grace enriches your soul. The Eucharist is God offering you intimate communion like he did with Mary. Such is a life of faithfulness to God. Then there is a life of faithfulness to idols. Wealth, pleasure, power, sex, the buckthorn. The buckthorn is detrimental to the health and welfare of woodlands, prairies, wetlands. It takes over large areas destroying wildlife habitat and food sources. It's an ever-present threat to the ecosystem. Now, if we read further in Judges, you see Abimelech suffered the fate of poetic justice. The people rebelled against him. And when he went to put down the rebellion, a woman threw a millstone down on his head and fractured his skull. And remember, he had his brother slain on a single stem. Wealth, pleasure, power, and sex. We're too aware of how worship of these idols has destroyed the moral fabric of our nation and the moral fabric of Christian churches. That old phrase, let out enough rope and you will hang yourself. Abimelech, Cardinal Theodore McCurry, Governor Andrew Cuomo. But I've also seen how worship of these idols has destroyed marriages and family life and left in their wake wounded spouses and children. So today I want to invite you to spend time in prayer and meditation and ask yourself, am I living a life of faithfulness to God? The olive tree, the fig tree, the vine. Or am I living a life of faithfulness to idols? Wealth, power, pleasure, and sex. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord, as we come before you this day, we pray that through the Holy Spirit we would live a life of faithfulness to you. But make us aware of when we fall short, when we turn to other idols, when we forget to worship you and remember that you are our Father, when we forget our mother Mary and our father Joseph. Lord, watch over us and help us ever to be faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we hold before you our concerns for the devastation in California, in Greece, and other areas of this country where people are struggling with natural disasters. We also hold before you our prayers for Afghanistan, especially the women and girls of that country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we this day thank you for the blessed sacrament of matrimony. We ask your blessings on all husbands and wives and families. May be, they be a living witness of your grace, mercy, and love to a world so in need of it. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we hold before you those that cry out for tender healing. Mercy says they, those who are dying, those who have entered into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. And we hold before you the intentions of this Mass, Belinda Braun. Paula Slowey, Mary Ovojkovic, and the 60th wedding anniversary of Michael and Helen Buck, we pray to the Lord. I also uh, ask that you take a moment now to add in your prayer uh, Cardinal Blaise Supic, as he will be preaching today at the funeral for Officer French at her funeral today. 
for all uh, police officers and all those who protect us. We ask that God will bless them. I also ask that you join in prayer with the people of St. Francis of Assisi, our neighbors to the west, uh, as on Monday they will be burying one of their parishioners who was shot and killed on the Dan Ryan the other night. So much senseless violence in, in our world and so many people who are suffering because of it. So let's just ask that God will heal our hearts, will turn us away from violence, that we may embrace the goodness that he shows us. Loving and gracious God, hear the prayers of your people. Bless us, Lord, so that we may always embrace your goodness, that we may embrace your grace and that we may be true messengers of the good news. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. O Lord, receive our offering by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. George, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, with Michael and Helen as they celebrate their 60th anniversary, with all married people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to her at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite the folks at home who are watching online now to take a moment and, act, and make an act of spiritual communion.
body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to please be seated, except for Michael and Helen. I've, I've got a little interrogation here. Now, you've been, you've been married for 60 years. All right, and uh, where did you get married? St. Ethelreda's Church. St. Ethelreda's Church uh, on 87th Street? Okay, and uh, who was the priest who married you? Father Frank Falk. Say that again. Frank Father Frank Falk. Father Frank Falk. Falk, a relation? No, my uncle. Your uncle, fantastic. That's great, wonderful. It's always such an honor and a little intimidating to marry relatives. You know, I, apparently he did a really good job for you. Huh? <laughs> did a great job for you. So that's wonderful. So well, if we could all extend our hands in blessing over uh, Michael and Helen. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the love that has brought together Michael and Helen, the commitment that has kept them together, and the goodness that they have shared with family and friends, and the example they give all of us that reminds us that love endures and commitment is real. So we thank you, Lord, for their 60 years. We ask that you bless their future years, that they may always know the love of friends and family and their loving God. 
And I ask you, Lord, send down your blessings, those of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to <laughs> Helen. Oh, just a couple. Uh, uh, children? Five. Five children. Fifteen grandchildren. Fifteen grandchildren. Two great-grandchildren. You've got more coming? What? Thirteen and fourteen foster children. Thirteen and fourteen foster children. Fantastic. Well, God bless you. God bless you. All right. Well, many, many more happy years. Let's stand together and pray for God's continued blessings. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord by our witness and through our life. Thanks be to God.